Hi, today it is now April the 6th and um, today is not a very different or funny day. I just go to work from 6 uh, at 6 in the morning. I must be at work and I was fighting with myself to wake up. And then when I got home this afternoon, when I just about to fall asleep, my co-worker from work called me because she asked some bills which is related to yesterday. And then I couldn't sleep, sleep anymore. Uh, that is what mainly happens today and um, I'm trying to sleep uh, early now. It is only 7.30 p.m. but I'm trying to sleep because um, I wanted to, after 6 hours when I woke up at around 2 or 3 mon uh, a.m. in the morning, I would take, um, make, uh, do some exercises, uh, homework exercises, not exercises, and then uh, go to work. Uh, tomorrow is Saturday, yes, I know. Um, and, and, uh, this month I just began to go to my English English class again and oh oh my god why do I feel so sleepy da, da, da. and everything is a little bit strange for me because I haven't learned English at class for two months so uh, today I will read, read to you an article which um, I learned because it is um, a short passage about an ac academic subject that I uh, train my English to be able to take the TOEFL uh, IBT test. So it begins. Many metropolises today face a serious problem in terms of air pollution and overcrowded streets, roadways and bridges. One powerful public policy tool that can re remedy this problem is called congestion pricing. In short, congestion pricing is a system by which um, motorists pay a fee to use certain roads, bridges and tunnels during peak times of the day. In other words, a motorist who wants to be who wants to use busy streets during rush hour will now have to pay a fee to do so. There are three advantages to, to this policy. First, congestion pricing gets small people to use public transportation. By raising the cost of using the roadways, individuals are encouraged not to drive. Instead, they are encouraged to find alternative means of transportation, such as mass transit, trains, buses, subways, biking and walking. Getting more individuals to give up driving and starting using public transportation will thereby reduce air pollution from vehicles, 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 no, vehicles emissions. Second, congestion pricing by taking more cars off the roadways means faster commu commuting times for everyone. Drivers that decide to pay for the right to drive during peak periods will face less traffic and can reduce the time spent in their daily commute. Simili similarly, 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 with less overall congestion, this is Buses will also be able to reach their destination to reach their destination more quickly. Third, congestion pricing is essentially an equitable solution that will benefit the majority. This policy will only punish those who choose to pollute the the air, their air. By increasing the cost of pollute, more people will choose not to. Therefore, everyone will benefit with clean air, cleaner air. Yeah, it is the passage reading, and I also had to um, listen to a to another lecturer who was um, maybe made the same point, agree with it or disagree with it, and then. We uh, in the class. I have to uh, define it, and then 
in 15 minutes of thinking after listening to the passage, uh, I must answer the question. The question is, summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, which I'm going to read now, explaining how they cast doubt on specific points made in the reading, which I just did it before. <coughs> and now, the listening part. It is quite long. Oh my god. Um, many people talk about congestion pricing as the best solution to the problems of overcrowding and pollution in our cities. Well, while the policy has its advantages, by itself it is not the best solution and does not live up to its promises. Let me explain why. First of all, congestion pricing will not necessarily, necessarily encourage more people to use public transportation. This is because in many cities, the public transportation system are not intensive enough to, make in, to meet increased demand. In other words, buses and subways don't go to every neighborhood and that means that they even that even if you don't want to drive your car, you have no choice because there is no public transportation in your neighborhood. That's problem. And uh, a second point I would like to make is that congestion pricing will not automatically result in faster commutes like proponents, proponent, proponents say, say it will. It doesn't mean that you can get to and from work in less time. This may be true for some people, but more than likely, once your city implements congestion pricing, you will actually spend more time going to and from work. Why? Well, because as more people use public transportation, trains and buses get more crowded. That means you wait longer before you can get on the bus or train. Third, congestion pricing will not benefit benefit any everyone. It's not that simple. Sure, some people will choose will choose to drive to work because it is more convenient. And congestion pricing will certain certainly tax those individuals for driving. But what about the individuals who have no other choice? Many workers cannot afford to live in a city or near public, uh, or near public transportation lines because housing in those areas is too expensive. Those individuals must drive to work, and many of them are from poor neighborhoods and have low-paying jobs. Congestion pricing will pen. Penalize them, force them to pay a much larger part of their budget for transportation and pollution. That's simply not fair. Not a fair policy, and it certainly doesn't benefit anyone. A better policy would be to expand public transportation to build. Uh, to build affordable housing closer to jobs and to encourage business to allow more employees to work from home. Those are more effective long-term solutions that would get more cars off the streets and reduce pollution. Well, it is a long vlog with only reading about something that um, you guys may not like, but let me just finish the sample answer. Of it and give leave, leave me comments if you think it is too boring to listen to it I will stop but you think it is a good way to maybe um, for you to know things because I don't really know about it before I have read I have heard about it yesterday from my class which is an a, a English class an English class that helps me to improve my Top for IBT skills, and um, so uh, you can, you guys can help me with my pronouns. What is that? Back with my pronunciation, or um, to discuss about it. Uh, but if it is too uh, 
boring, so I will stop it. So now the answer. The lecturer and the passage both discusses congestion pricing, a policy that charges people for driving during busy times of the day. While the passage says that congestion pricing is helpful, the lecturer argues that it is not a good idea. According to the passage, the police encourages the policy encourages people to use public transportation instead of cars, which will let which will lead to less pollution, let or lead. The lecturer points out that in some cities, uses don't go to what? No, buses don't go to all neighborhoods. As a result, many people will not be able to get around. Next, the passage claims that it makes travel faster because eliminates traffic. However, the church the lecturer predicts that commute times will increase because buses uh, will be too crowded. Lastly, the passage states that congestion pricing is fair and will be too crowded. Uh, no, Ooh, I'm sorry. Lastly, the passage says, states that congestion pricing is fair and beneficial to everybody. The lecturer shows that the policy puts additional financial st stress on drivers who do not have a lot of extra money. There are many issues surrounding congestion pricing. The lecturer and passage both present some of the issues. And the last thing about the word issues, which is this word here. Issues. Here, yeah, that word. Because uh, my teacher said it is issue, 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 but I am pronouncing it issue, and he is kind of a uh, American English pronunciation because he learns everything from the Americans, but I am kind of mix English, American English, and uh, uh, Britain English um, pronunciation. I mix in between, and I have a different accent too. About this problem and explaining about my English accents, which I don't know what's going on with me. With uh, will be the next topics for another vlog. Today is too long. Bye and have a great weekend.